Um, okay, hello and <laughs> welcome to our latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. Um, today, I'm delighted to be with James Short um, from Dundee and Angus, uh, which I'm sure is sunny because it's the sunniest city in Scotland. So it, it must be <laughs> sunny out there, of course. <laughs> and, and we're talking about a subject um, I quite enjoy, to be fair, um, uh, maths and, and how it's taught. And we've we have heard a bit about maths in the past. Everything from eScoil, which is a kind of uh, a Scottish unit, which has been set up to deliver uh, remote lessons to into schools. Um, and I've heard about their three-hour math lessons <laughs> that are taught. Three hours online teaching maths. I've, I, I, can, I can feel the fear <laughs> <laughs> already in the room. But um, I'm, I'm really interested to hear, um, James, about the work you've been doing, um, how to bring maths to the masses. So... Without any delay, over to you, James. Thank you, Kenji. So um, I was wondering how I could present this. Uh, so I thought maybe I'll tell you a wee story about how I got started and leading up to it. So I'm going to share my screen. And I promise it won't be Def Pal PowerPoint, but I'll do my best. <laughs> all right. And then I'll share that. OK, so we can all see that, yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, so the story behind Taught at Home. So I'm going to go back to 2018 when I was doing my TQFE, um, my postgrad at Stirling University. And it was here that I came across the fantastic technology called H5P. Now H5P is a really cool technology that's integrated into um, different websites. And you can do interactive videos, interactive presentations, a new thing called branch scenarios. You can also do quizzes and so it's really good for getting students to test their knowledge as they're learning sort of like a scaffolding technique as well so this is the first time i came across this and this just opened my mind to wow okay this is something really cool i really like to use this and at this time i was already interested in making videos and and this kind of just opened an avenue for me so you might be wondering who is it that introduced you to this fantastic technology well it's none other than the host today kenji so i have to say kenji thanks for that you uh opened the doors for me on that case so i was doing my placement at dundee and angus college and there i came across their fantastic learning and digital resources department and these guys are really cool they're some of the best uh, and most enthusiastic uh, people I've worked with and they introduced me to Moodle and the plugin with Moodle for H5P and that I integrate almost seamlessly with Moodle. So I started to play around with H5P in my spare time, started to develop some uh, interactive games and quizzes and videos essentially for my students. I was doing an HNC electrical engineering course uh, and so some of the things I was doing Okay, sorry. There we go, I'm back on. So some of the things I was doing on this uh, required the use of an XP pen, so I need to get a graphics tablet. So this was so I can input mathematics into the computer. Uh, in case you don't know what these are, they're basically like a mouse pad with a pen. So you basically, your pen is the mouse pointer. So this is good for uh, touch sensitive graphics if you want to do maths. Absolutely brilliant for that. The only problem is, is these take a long time to actually get used to. The hand-eye coordination is quite difficult. You might be drawing something because you're looking at the screen, but your hand is down here. So it's not like writing on paper. If you want to use an iPad, probably easier. But these are a cheap solution. And after about 20 minutes, you get used to them. I also needed a good uh, microphone because one of the things as a student myself, when I was doing my undergrad and when I was at college and I was looking at videos myself, one of my... Uh, problems that I had was the audio that was coming out wasn't good enough. It was scratchy or, you know, there was a lot of popping. So I invested in a pretty decent uh, podcasting microphone just to make sure that the audio was crystal clear uh, for my videos. So this blue snowball uh, pretty does. I'm not, you know, there's millions of different things you can buy. These are the two particular ones I've got, which, which work really well. So I use PowerPoint for the animations. Now, the reason I use PowerPoint is because it's almost on every single Windows machine. Uh, if you've got an account with your um, college, they'll have this, I'm pretty sure. And actually, I said earlier, Def Power PowerPoint, and I, get, I think it gets a lot of bad rep because it's not PowerPoint itself, it's the way it's used. It's the way that people use it. And I think this is a really useful tool, especially for mathematics, because it's got 
you can input equations uh, using the Unicode or markup uh, latex language, or uh, if you're comfortable just using it. But the good thing is, is you can do animations with the um, equations. So if you wanted to show transposition, you can actually uh, animate that. So instead of having like line after line of text, I think it's a really useful way of animating these things. And you can animate graphics and it's really simple to use when you play around with it. So I use PowerPoint for these. I also use Microsoft Whiteboard with my XP pen that I showed you. So I use Microsoft Whiteboard for doing uh, live demonstrations, live worked examples. And I also use a screencasting software. I use particularly, I use Screencast-O-Matic. There's many different ones, but I like this one because it's quite cheap. It's only about 15 pounds for a yearly subscription. It backs it up on the cloud and it's got a nice video editor in there. PowerPoint does do um, video casting. Um, so you can just do it all in PowerPoint, but I kind of like the, this, probably the best 15 pound I've spent. Uh, yes, and YouTube. So I started my YouTube channel while I was working, uh, while I was doing my placement at Dundee and Angus College. And here I started to experiment with different videos and used my uh, HNC students as guinea pigs. So some of the things I did, you might seen um, Khan Academy, this kind of thing. So I started to imitate those guys by doing, uh, so this is, I was showing um, a video of parent power conjugate current. And I didn't realize, like I did this in 2018 and within about, uh, I don't know, about two months, I'd got nearly 500 views, you know, considering I'd only shared this link with my students. I was like, all oh, right, okay. So maybe there's something here. There's a lot of demand for this kind of thing. Uh, so I used the Microsoft whiteboard for that and PowerPoint. I use PowerPoint for showing nice diagrams, nice animated diagrams that I could talk over and explain as well. Uh, and so this is what I used. And then here comes H5P taking this video that I uploaded on YouTube, I then put it into H5P and I could embed questions in the video. So um, in this particular one, the student has a question and they've got an either or answer, you know, so I, I simplified for them. Now I tend not to overload it with questions because it interrupts the flow. So you've got to be careful with how you put the questions in because if you overload it with questions, then students will get, it kind of disrupts the flow. But if you do it strategically placed, within the video. And if you actually make the video with the questions in mind, so you can ask the, the, the viewer, okay, so, um, okay, here's the current, what do you think this will be? Then the student, it's kind of like you're actually asking them and it's designed for that. So I played around with that, tried to find out the balance. Uh, and it's a really useful tool for getting the students to actually engage with the video instead of being passive. I think it's really cool. So when I started to work for Dundee and Angus College, when I got employed, I looked into WordPress because I had an idea that, okay, maybe there's something in it. I'd like to create a website using this technology. And the reason I looked into WordPress is because there's a plugin available for WordPress, uh, which just for like Moodle, you can integrate it and it has the same editor, same features, and it's really simple to use. And my, so you don't need any coding. You just need to know how to use uh, a little bit of HTML, but not much. And then, um, it's basically drag and drop interface. So the, my, my energy and my effort is on the actual lessons and designing the lessons rather than having to code and figure out how I can do something. So I am limited by what H5P can do, but in a sense, that's a good thing because I'm not trying to think too much. I'm trying to focus it down on the actual, the, the teaching and the learning. All right. So around about this time, it was. February 2020, so not long ago. And I was really busy. And I was, so it was around about the, the prelims, the national five prelims and higher prelims. And I was getting loads of questions from parents and uh, students asking me to privately tutor them. And I just had no time to do this. So I was like, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. I can maybe show you some uh, websites that can help you or some. And I was really stuck as to, to getting them something that there was, and by the way, there's a lot of good YouTubers out there doing this stuff. So, but in terms of interactivity and there wasn't really anything that I could see, maybe there is, but I couldn't find much of it. And I know um, the SQA are, are developing uh, more for, for their scholar, but this kind of, uh, kind of planted a seed in my head. And then what happened? Well, as we all know, COVID-19 happened. And then suddenly everybody went into lockdown and this made me think, hmm, perhaps I could be the one to create this website. Perhaps I've got time in the summer. I, I can't go on my holiday anymore. Well, why not? Let's start this. So I started to embark researching this using WordPress. And what I wanted is I wanted to be able to 
have my personality and the interactivity that I give in the classroom, but on the computer screen. Uh, and I wanted students to be able to access this from home. And so Taught From Home was born and I started to develop materials for this. And I wanted to have a few principles. I wanted it to focus on National 5 Mathematics to start with because um, that's what I was getting more requests for. And I think that was where people were, were, were needing help with. Uh, but also I was gonna look at other subjects, higher uh, maths, advanced hires, maybe uh, Nat 4, perhaps other subjects, if I could collaborate with other, other lecturers. So the, the values that I've got is I want it to be open and free. You know, I don't, I want this, when I was an undergrad and when I was at college and at university and even as a postgrad, and even now, I'm making use of all open source software. You know, I'm take, take, taking from everybody. And so I thought, well, maybe it's time to give something back. And so open and free uh, for this. I want it to be shareable. So I'd love to be able to share it with lecturers and uh, share my techniques. You know, I've got a lot to learn and I'm by no means a master. You know, I'm tip of the iceberg in terms of what I know, but I can share some of this and hopefully help other people. Uh, I want it to be good quality as well. So um, high quality, uh, low, low buffer rate, high quality audio. So people, because I think low quality stuff puts people off. So high quality, obviously. And I want it to be interactive as well. So H5P is pretty much crucial for what I'm doing here. Uh, okay. And I think without further ado, I'll just take you to my website and explain a little bit about it. Uh, okay. So if I go to this, okay. So can you see that? My web? Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. So this is what you see when you come into my website and I've attached a Creative Commons license to this because obviously I want it to be open source and I want everything to be clear uh, so you can share it. Uh, okay, so the first thing is I want it to be absolutely easy to navigate. So I've got a contents page, I've got downloads, games, I've got a bit and about. Uh, so what I do, if I go down here, this is kind of what I've got. Now this is a work in progress. I've got about 120 videos that I've done so far and each one is a lesson. So I've got standalone lessons. So if I just go to one, I can maybe do, um, oh, I don't know. Let's go to, I'll go to quadratic equations. You know, you've got properties part one. Quadratic equations, it's a really big uh, subject. So I've got quite a few lessons on this. So this is kind of the layout that I do for my lessons. Um, kind of have like a nice graphic, but I give a small introduction to it. And then I ask the students, can you answer these questions? So before they go on to the video, I'm saying, okay, do you understand these? If you know how to do it, go on. If you don't, then I answer these questions in my video. And then you've got a video. And my video is just no more than five minutes. Because I think if it's any longer than five minutes, students tend to switch off or you've come. So if it's more than five minutes, I'll split it up into two different videos. Um, I've not got any questions in this. Um, but once the students watch this and I explain how it's done and I'll just give a, a brief demonstration if you can see it. I don't know if you'll get any of the audio. No, no audio. You get audio? No. Okay, okay. So it's got me explaining it. Well, as you can see, I've just used PowerPoint to uh, animate it and uh, explain it. But it's got me talking over it as well. Uh, and then I've got a little have a go question. So this is using... Uh, uh, H5P, so I've created a, a fill in the blanks kind of question. So the student gets this, and then they've got to find the value of A in this case. So they find the value of A, and then they can check their answer, and it tells them that they're correct. Okay, my computer's just gone slow. Okay, maybe my computer can't do Zoom and this at the same time. There you go. And if they get it wrong, um, you can also add feedback. So if, it's a, if they get it wrong, you can maybe say, hmm, maybe you want to think about um, how you're uh, solving for A there. Something that can give them a bit of a hint for this. Uh, so that's basically how I go about it. Uh, if I go back to one of the earlier ones, so I've got the navigation here. So I'm trying to make it as simple for them as possible. If I go to the navigation, surge is usually uh, one that people struggle with, I find. So rationalizing the denominator, this kind of thing. So this is, this is one of the earlier ones. Uh, in this one, you'll see on this, I've got different, if I expand that, the, you've got dots here. Now these are the questions. So throughout the, the video, 
it'll ask a question and it'll pop up a question. So this is the video. In this one, I had me, uh, my face on it because I thought, okay, it's good to see your face. But as I started to get into the more like quadratic equations and stuff, I realized that actually I need this whole real, <laughs> real uh, estate. Uh, so I got rid of the face and just used the screen. But okay, so then they click the question and then they can say, okay, root two divided by root two. So this is trying to get their understanding of the concept of thirds and uh, division. So they can go this, they can check that, and they go, yay, and they get a little reward for it. Uh, so this is kind of what I do uh, throughout the video. It's I've, I pause the video, but you don't have to have a pause so you can get it to run all the way through. So that's quite useful. And then here we go. I got like a, a little drag and drop game. I'm not entirely sure about this game. I might rethink this. This is, um, you have to place the sequence of solving the third, rationalizing the denominator in the correct sequence. Um, so obviously you get the, the, the beginning and you try and you get it. And obviously you want... The, the, the final answer and you have to put them in order. You can check it and it tells you which ones you've got right and which ones you've got wrong. I don't know if that's particularly the best way of doing it. I'm still thinking about this and um, maybe it's a bit, it's confused a bit too much, but I wanted to show them the steps involved in rationalize the denominator where they're actually engaging, interacting. Um, yeah, I'll show you the downloads because the idea I had for this is for every single video that I do, I've got loads of work examples throughout them. And so I've, every, I've got loads of also worksheets uh, for the expressions and formula part of the, the course. You know, they've got worksheets that they can use and I've got answers as well. So this is for them if they want to print it off. And so it's not all just online, they can do it. Oh, I've got a workbook. So every work example I've got throughout my videos, I've stuck them in here uh, so they can actually work through this. And then if they get stuck, it directs them to the video that they need to go to, to to find the answer for that. I just thought it was a really simple way of you know, giving them a bit more uh, extra resources. Uh, I'll just quickly go to games. So I, I've made two games. They're a bit gimmicky, to be honest with you. One of them, like the word search is a bit gimmicky. So the word search is, it's just for a little bit of fun really, where I've given them 10 mathematic, I think it's expressions of format. Yeah, expressions of formula, expressions and phrases. So I've given them three, trinomial, quadratic, gradient, and then they've got to find the other, you've got to find uh, those three plus another seven, which they don't know, which is pretty cool. So you've got something like this, and you've got to find the words, and this is where I can't find any words now, just to give you an idea of uh, what it is. Uh, okay, if anybody can see, you've probably seen, you've probably seen it. Anyway, right. I'll so go quadratic to quadratic in the third row there, or the third column. Third, third column. Third Aha, third. thank you. Yes, there you go. And they can just drag that. Ah, well done. <laughs> so they can drag and go through that. And, and if they get something that's not one, then it doesn't do it. But if they could drag it and it'll stick. Uh, yeah, so that's basically how that works. It's pretty simple, uh, a little bit of fun. Uh, and they can do it on their phone as well, using their finger. Uh, if I go, and the other one that I've got is a memory game. This one is actually pretty useful. Um, so this is like a memory test game. So it's uh, matching pairs, basically. So what they've got is they've got uh, so the area of a circle. And now you've got to match that up with the formula for the area of the circle. So it's not that one, the gradient. So you get the idea. And then when you get it, it blanks out and that's you got it. And it times you as well. So it's a little bit fun. It gets them to think about the, the equations of formula, maybe a good practice. Uh, yeah, but I'm still developing this and um, coming up with videos. I've still got loads of videos that I'm doing on my YouTube channel. So all the videos I've done this, I'm sort of drip feeding my YouTube channel, one video a day. Um, I've got about 130 so far that I'm uploading and a lot more still to do. And I'm still a work in progress, but uh, yeah, I think it's, if I had something like this when I was uh, studying that five, I think I would have been pretty pleased. Um, but I'm always open for suggestions as well. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll open, I'll take any questions. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that, that that was great, James. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you've set the standard pretty high, as well as your just your PowerPoint animations. Going to have to get you back to do something on that. But um, does does anyone have a question um, for James on what what they've seen so far? You can just unmute yourself and uh, ask away. Um, just in terms of feedback and audience, what what sort of feedback you've been? 
getting what sort of people do you find are actually viewing this, James? Well, I've, so far, I've had a couple of lectures from different colleges and my own college who are feeding back on me uh, in terms of students. And they're, and they're saying that it's really good. Um, so I've had positive feedback, but I've not actually had any student feedback, which is what I'm more interested in to know what students think about it. So hopefully when I get a bit more um, exposure, I suppose, and people actually find it and know about it, then I can. So the, the feedback, anybody can go onto my website and I direct them to my contact form so they can contact me using the contact form. If they've got any feedback, any suggestions, anything at all, um, a guy from um, Edinburgh College, I think he noticed that I'd made a little bit of a, a typo in one of my videos, but I really appreciate that because he spotted it and I can go back and I can change it, which I will do. Uh, yeah, so I'm literally, at the on my website, they can go on and feed back, that back to me. Uh, but when I get exposure, I really in, I'm interested, like the things I'm interested in are, so in terms of the interactivity, cause I've got an intuition on this is that the videos that are short and I pepper maybe about five or six questions throughout them, it's stopping the flow of the video. And it's like, oh, just get on with the, the, the worked example, will you? I know. So I've stopped putting in so many questions uh, and maybe just one or two. And recent ones, I've not put any in. I've just put the video. because so I want to find out from students if that's actually beneficial for them to actually do the questions. Uh, so yeah, uh, feedback's important for me. <laughs> Can I ask James? Do you do you add um, do you allow comments on the videos? Um, yes, on my YouTube channel, I allow comments. On the website, um, I can allow them to have comments. Uh, I've disabled most of them. I think one or two pages I've not disabled by mistake, but I have intended to disable them. Just I don't want any spam, pretty much. So I have to figure out to stop that from happening because on my YouTube channel, especially when I just started it up. Uh, there was people that recognized, oh, this is a new channel, and I was getting lots of spam comments. So I've put a, a moderation on my comments, so I get to see them before. But yeah, I think it's important on my YouTube channel, if students are commenting, that they see that I'm engaging with them and uh, I'm interacting with them. Okay. Any other questions? I, I have a lot, but Susan, I feel, is going to go first here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'll have to, I have to do. I have to do some a phone. I'm at college, and the, the system's not allowing me to use Zoom. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. That's why I took all the video, my video and things off from from my my data. Uh, hi, thank you, James. That was really really helpful and really um, uh, innovative in, in, the, in the methods that you're using online and the technology. And I've never heard of um, the the. Sorry, I've forgotten already. I'm just writing these things down. The the H five P. H five P. Yeah, I never used thank that before. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you use it as? Um, are you hoping to use it as, like the learning, the main learning and teaching, that you're going to kind of use in the next session as such at the moment? Um, are you going to see it as a revision tool, um, or, or are you just going to use it as a kind of backup so students can use it if they, you know, can't attend your courses or your classes, things like that? Yeah, I think. When we've gone into remote learning, I think it's important that we do both synchronous and asynchronous styles. So with this, it's um, they can do it in their own time. Uh, but I think having synchronous face-to-face -face teaching online using Teams or Zoom, whatever it, your college uses, I think that's really important. And I wouldn't use that. It would be as an assistant. So the idea is not to replace teaching at all. It's as um, an addition to the, the class, classroom learning. You see, yeah. Otherwise, I'm not sure. I don't think, you know, I'm a big believer in... The, you know the, the the pastoral support part of the teaching and um I, you, you don't really get that from a computer but yeah i think it's a yeah it's a good question and i'm just wondering like how are you when are we going into remote learning how are you going to do your teaching so uh, that's the, the multi-million pound question uh, yeah we've got ms teams at edinburgh college and we're experimenting with um, using that alongside with Moodle, so that'll be the two main kind of avenues as such. But we're kind of 
still experimenting with a lot of things. We're not too sure, but certainly we find that the stylus and pen with the pad uh, and using the whiteboard in MS Teams is very useful. And one of the, the main um, issues we have, I'm sure you'll have it too, is just to gather evidence from the students in terms of their working, because obviously they're going to be writing it and trying to, you know, um, gather that in one way or another. And that's what I'm having real difficulty with at the moment. So if you've got any suggestions, anybody, well, very, our, very welcome. Our, um, I'm quite lucky um, with Dundee and Angus, because a good group of us were, were quite, you know, we've been talking and thinking this through and we're using MS Teams predominantly. We do have Moodle, but we're kind of in that position where we're, we're not stuck on one. We can, we've opened it up to whatever's best for that particular subject or lecturer. And the maths, our maths team, we're kind of believing that um, class notebook seems to be a good one for, for using. It's got its issues. It's not by no means perfect. But what you can do um, is what we're getting the students to do is to take photos um, of their work, send it in through um, class notebook. And what we can do using an iPad or a graphics pen, the XP pen, we can write on top of it, mark it, give them feedback. You can also embed uh, audio, a, a video. It's quite useful, I think, for for that part of it. And it keeps it all um, organized for the students as well. Again, whether it's going to work uh, perfectly, who knows? It's We can only try, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. I mean, in terms of what the end user has, um, in terms of technology and Wi-Fi connection and all the rest, it, I think mm. it'll be quite, uh, quite interesting. <laughs> first week they're all back <laughs> absolutely yeah no i totally agree and uh, especially i'm thinking about uh some students that i know uh, who you know the 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 places that they live you know they share a bedroom with their their brother or sister uh, or their brothers and they've got to basically come on microsoft teams on their bed you know in their bed while because they've got nowhere else in the house that they can actually uh, connect to and have a bit of privacy and then you're thinking, okay, so they don't, like I'm lucky, I've got my own little office in my, my house and I've got my own desk. Yeah. But who, how many of them have anything like that? You know, a breakfast yeah. table, who, who, you yeah. know, so it's quite difficult. It is yeah. going to be a challenge. Even Wi-Fi access, I mean, people mm. can't afford it. We just assume everybody's got it and they don't. And, you know, we delivered some course, some um, lessons before the <clears throat> holidays when it was locked down and I had a particular class that was adult returners and it was like chaos it was dogs running around there's kids running around there was you know some people didn't have wi-fi so they had to go around to the person's house this was when you could go around to some, somebody else's house. and it was just chaos uh, in some cases so you know we keep forgetting things like that as well so not only have we got our own delivery but we've got to think about how the users can engage as well and, and, and give them the opportunity to engage, yeah. But that was really helpful, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, and if you get the chance, do, and if you, do you does your college use Moodle? Yes. So speak to the digital guys there and ask if they can, if they've got the, got the plugin installed, because I think okay. it would be useful. It's not the holy grail, you know. I, I'm a bit of a, a big fan of it, but it's definitely not the holy grail. Um, and there's lots of other things, but it, it's easy to use. So if you can uh, ask somebody to install it, you know, I'm looking at doing, uh, from, from my website as well, looking at doing videos on how to produce videos and how to create them and how to do H5P. Um, and I think that'd be helpful for, for educators and lecturers who have never really used it just to see how easy it actually is. It's like it, there is a bit of a, a learning curve, like with anything, but it's not too steep that um, somebody like yourself uh, couldn't just easily pick it up after a couple of weeks, you know? Hey, and for this, so, sorry, for this recorded part of the session, we've got time for perhaps just one more question. Um, so does anyone have a, a, a last question for James? Otherwise, it'll just be me and you don't want that. <laughs> Okay, it's just going to be me. <laughs> Sorry, James. Is, is there anything, when you were producing these kind of question sets and video sets, is there any kind of functionality that you missed? Like something that you would have done in a face-to-face -face situation, but that you couldn't easily replicate online, um, whether it was something to do with graphs, uh, particular mathematical notation? What, what, what kind of challenges did you yeah, face? What have you yeah. to overcome? Good. That's a very good question. Um, like H5P and doing it online is very limited. Um, so I've had to work within that limitation. And for example, 
I, I use a lot of screen caps, so I do any equations in PowerPoint, copy a photo, and then upload that as a picture. It would be just nice and easy if I could type that in directly. And I think any kind of mathematical input is really difficult. Um, like getting the student to input any kind of equation or solution using their keyboard is they'd have to learn how to typeset in in latex or something like this or i know there's other things out there that i'm looking into but yeah so and in in the technology the students can't just put in their handwritten solutions into the solutions uh, into the solution box and then it you know there's an algorithm that recognizes and what it is they can't do that so that is a, a major limitation so i have to think of ways that that isn't a limitation in the questions i ask there are some um, mathematical equation editors within Microsoft, which allows you to draw a, 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 a fraction and it will recognize that. But you're right, um, they are tend to be less than perfect. Perhaps we'll have to save that for a future um, virtual bridge session. <laughs> but that's all we have time for in this recorded portion of the session. Uh, we will probably just stay on for a bit of a conversation afterwards. But um, if you're joining us via YouTube, uh, thanks for taking the time to be with us. And hopefully you'll join us for a future session. But until then, thank you and stay safe.